Yo, how's it going everyone? This is Mitchell Mander here, and it's been a while since I actually talked about the Boruto manga on the YouTube channel. I kind of gave up on the series earlier this year as, um, well, I wasn't really super interested in the chapters that were coming out at the time, and the chapters that have come out since then haven't been too much better. But this chapter, on the other hand, is easily the best chapter of 2022. And I think it's the best chapter, honestly, since 2020. Since uh, Ishiki did his little invasion of Konoha and all that stuff going on. So it's been a little while since I've been actually like super excited about the Borto manga. But the stuff we got in this chapter was actually really interesting. And I want to talk about it today. But I will say really quickly that don't expect me to do a Borto chapter review every single month. If we get a chapter like this again, sure I'll talk about it. But just giving you guys a heads up. I was just really interested in this chapter so I wanted to talk about it. So, uh, maybe we should talk about it now. Now, the main star in this chapter is definitely Amato, who is basically uh, spilling the beans here. Sort of. More on that in a little bit, but he gives off Ada's abilities, and interesting enough, apparently, she's actually only 16 years old, as she can go back to see past events up until her birth. So, he basically says, as of right now, that's 16 years, so... All the people that were uh, saying that Ida was uh, a creep for um, falling in love with Kwaki. Yeah, not really. She's a little bit older than Kwaki, but not by a lot. And also the people that were um, thinking that she was like hot or whatever. Yeah, you might be creeps yourself now because uh, that age reveal uh, revealed a lot there. So uh, yeah, there's that. <laughs> but anyways, uh, he lists off her abilities to Naruto and Chikamaru everybody that's listening then, and also Damon's abilities. And I thought it was kind of interesting because Kawaki decided to test it out and he ended up getting smacked in the face, which I thought was kind of funny. So that basically confirms uh, Damon's abilities to reflect his attacks on his opponent or anyone that has, like, you know, murderous intent. That's pretty much the end of them. Now, the first major reveal we get in this chapter is how Ada and Damon got their abilities. It's DNA from an Otsutsuki god named Shibai Otsutsuki. Yes, a brand new character and a brand new god. And my goodness, this guy must be like the strongest character ever. Good thing he's not around, because if he was around, yeah, that would be the end of the series. But anyways, uh, Shibai here has some monstrous abilities. Apparently, Otsutsuki used abilities called sh Shinjutsu, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Shinjutsu. It's basically divine abilities that don't require hand signs. Um, one thing I don't like in this chapter is the fact that they kind of downplay Ninjutsu by saying that it's like a cheap imitation of it, which, I don't know, I wasn't a big fan. I don't know if that was a mistranslation by Viz, but that was something I didn't like because we had so many cool abilities in Naruto, and you're basically saying that they're just cheap copies of Shinjutsu. I don't know. Not really a big fan of that, but anyways, that's besides the point. But anyways, um, yeah, this guy has some monstrous abilities. Like, obviously, he's got monstrous strength. That's where Damon gets his strength from. If he has the reflective ability, that means, like, nobody could oppose him. And then he has the Senrigan. He can just look in the past and see what's going on back then and maybe figure out that someone's planning something against him and then take them out. So, yeah, this Otsutsuki god is just, like, incredible. Apparently, Amato says that him just waving his hands creates, like, windstorms and then an angry roar creates, like, thunderstorms. So, yeah, god has arrived in this series. But yeah, he's not around anymore, but he just has his, I guess Amado has his corpse, which is something I kind of want to know more about. Like, how in the world did Amado actually get access to his body? Did Ishiki let him actually experiment with it or something? I don't know, but Amado theorizes that he basically reincarnated so much through karma that he basically gave up on his body and just basically transcended life itself, so... Yeah, that's an interesting reveal. There's some things I don't like about it, but at the same time, it's actually really neat and explains a few things. I just kind of want to know how Amado um, got access to his body. I'm a little bit, um, I'm a little bit curious about that because uh, that's kind of a big, uh, that's kind of a big um, issue with the chapter. Because like, how in the world did he get access to his body? How in the world did they do it? How did Ishiki get this body? I don't know. I guess we'll find out soon enough. Now, a seemingly minor part in this chapter actually leads to the next reveal. So, Delta shows up in front of Sarda and Mitsuki, and she wants to see Ada. And she's still charmed by Ada, obviously. 
And that's when Sumire shows up and actually knows the shutdown code for Delta and shuts her down, which I thought was kind of interesting. So it's not just Amado that has this shutdown code or Amado Shikamaru. Probably Naruto has this as well. So Sumire has this as well. So that's kind of interesting. But we get the reveal that Delta is actually a clone of Amado's daughter. So anybody that was thinking that maybe Delta was Amado's daughter, congratulations. You are a great prognosticator. Because, uh, wow. It was either between that or Ada. There's, like, debates going on whether Delta or Ada was Amado's deceased daughter. But we got the real what happened. Her name was actually Ik Ikibi. I believe that's how you pronounce it. She had an incurable disease and she ended up succumbing to, her d to this disease. And basically, Amado cloned her. And that's basically how Delta was created. She retained her memories and I think she had her personality but she just was a completely different person which kind of explains how Kashin Koji is a clone of Jiraiya but like he doesn't have like the same he almost doesn't have the same personality as Jiraiya he just has like the serious personality of Jiraiya but like he just feels like a completely different person so he may have their abilities or he might they might retain their memories but they're just a different person so Amado was or Amado was despairing because of this at first, he didn't give up on his daughter, and he was trying to basically um, play God by bringing her back from the dead. But he realized he couldn't do that through scientific means, and that's when he met Jigen, a.k.a. Ishiki Otsutsuki, and that's where he basically joined Kara, and he basically promised to bring his dead daughter back. But, yeah, realizing that his plan was to destroy the planet and drain all life from it, what would be the point of bringing back his daughter? Probably would have betrayed him anyway, so... Yeah, Amado was right to take down Ishiki and then find another way of uh, getting his daughter back, which apparently he actually embedded it in Kawaki's karma, her memories, since uh, karma basically is divine power and you can basically reincarnate through karma. So he's hoping that Kawaki basically transfers karma onto a clone body and then that clone reincarnates into his daughter. An interesting scheme, and I'm interested to see uh, how that plays out, or if Kwaki even wants to go along with it, since you know how Kwaki is. But all of that was pretty interesting information in, within this chapter. Now the next big moment within this chapter, and it's kind of the final moment within the chapter, is we get the reveal that it seems that Boruto and Momoshiki's consciousness are basically becoming converged. So, um, spoiler warning for My Hero Academia fans, just give you a, kind of a second to skip this section i'll put like a thing in the disclaimer for this section so you don't get spoiled but anyways in my hero academia shigaraki and all for one are basically converging in the one being or their thoughts are basically intermingling with one another although in that case it seems like all for one's plan was to just take over shigaraki's body rather than shigaraki you know and all for one having like you know the same body or something like that it seems like All for One has um, some different purposes. In this case, it seems like Momoshiki can't exactly do anything about it. Their consciousness is just linking with one another, so there's nothing they can really do about it. But anyways, uh, I like their conversation they have here. Like, it's, you know, Momoshiki's not exactly being Boruto's friend. He's just basically telling them what he's thinking about this situation, that Amado is basically telling the truth about Shinjutsu and all the stuff he said about Shibai. But the one thing that seems very off is that Ada's ability to basically charm people does not seem like a Senjutsu ability. In fact, he says it's not one. So he's thinking that Amado is lying. So, um, yeah, Amado's not off the hook here. I mean, there's a few um, red flags here. We have Ada and her love ability. That's already a red flag. Um, how we got access to Shibai's body, that's another red flag. So, yeah. I feel like Amado has another plan up, its, up his sleeve that he's not telling anybody. I don't know if Ada is aware of this plan or not, or she could look back to see what he's planning. But it's clear that Amado has something up his sleeve, so we can't really trust him yet. Now the last reveal we get in this chapter is after Boruto and Momoshiki's thoughts and consciousness were revealed to be converging. We get the reveal that Boruto has unlocked an ability of Momoshiki's to see into the future a little bit. He'll probably be unlocking a few more abilities, like maybe flying around and maybe being able to absorb stuff through his palms. 
like having renegons in his poems that would be kind of crazy to see but anyways for now he's gained the ability to look into the future and it's interesting to say the least it seems like something crazy is about to happen we have uh, some jonings that are following somebody which i believe is either boruto or kawaki then we have team 10 confronting someone and saying that's not something a friend would do hmm <laughs> hint hint and then we have sarada sage mode mitsuki and sage mode mitsuki he's really mad I gotta say, I'm pretty happy to see Sage Mode Mitsuki in the manga. A lot of people have been waiting to see it forever, and yeah, it actually happened. But he's not very happy. And then we see Kawaki, and it looks like he's got a little bit of blood on his face. So it seems like something is about to happen in the near future. That's pretty much where the chapter comes to an end. But I gotta say, I'm trying to figure out whether this is Boruto or Kawaki that everyone's confronting. Because on one hand, it seems like it's Boruto just because Team 10 is uh, confronting somebody, either Boruto or Kawaki, and saying that's not something a friend would do, so it would make sense to be Boruto, maybe getting possessed by Momoshiki or something. But at the same time, Mitsuki is not happy. And you know how Mitsuki feels about Boruto. It makes me think that this is actually Kawaki maybe attacking Boruto, and maybe this is how Boruto gets his scar. There's a chance that it's coming up really soon. And maybe Mitsuki and Sarada witness this, and Mitsuki goes into sage mode and goes into a rage and attacks Kawaki. And I gotta say right now that um, based on Kawaki's skills, yeah, I, even with sage mode, I'm pretty sure Mitsuki can't take him down. But that's to be seen in the future. But anyways, the chapter pretty much comes to an end here. Now overall, I thought this was a very solid chapter. There's a couple issues I do have with it. But I still think it's really solid. I'm very interested to see where the story goes from here. Um, this is definitely the best chapter we've got all year in what has been arguably the worst year for the manga. Probably since the beginning, in my opinion. It just hasn't been super exciting, honestly, since like the Ishiki stuff back in 2020. That was where the manga was really interesting. And it's kind of been kind of just slowly going downhill. But this is actually a good sign in my opinion so hopefully things get better from here i mean my issues with this chapter have to do with shibai's body being available for amato that seems kind of very convenient i'd like to know more about that and then the whole ninjutsu being a shameless copy of shinjutsu i don't know i think that that's very lame it really dismisses a lot of the ninjutsu we saw in naruto that we thought were really cool there's a lot of really cool ninjutsu and you're just telling me it's just a cheap imitation I don't know, that just kind of just messes with the previous series and messes with the narrative a little bit. Not really a big fan of that point, but oh well. Um, the divine abilities are actually pretty interesting as well, I guess. <laughs> but guys, in the comment section down below, what are your thoughts? I give this chapter a 9 out of 10, by the way. So did you like this chapter? Did you hate this chapter? Post your thoughts in the comment section down below. Um, if we get another chapter as good as this one again, maybe I'll talk about the Boruto manga again. So yeah. Anyways, guys, um, if you're new to the channel, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. I do live streams. And you should check them out. Alrighty, guys. Have a good day or night wherever you're at, and I'll see you all later. Bye.